covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category 5. Let's get into it. Intel's newly announced 12th gen chip hybrid is set to compete with both ARM and Apple Silicon. That's coming up. But first, Mozilla's privacy VPM service is now available on macOS and Linux. Mozilla VPM launched in July, but only for Windows 10 or Android or iOS devices. The new availability on Linux not only opens Mozilla VPM up for Linux desktop users, but it's our hope that this will also mean the service will be available in the budding Linux-based smartphone market, with devices such as Librem 5 and PinePhone gaining in popularity. For now, though, the system requirements seem to hint to Linux compatibility exclusive on Ubuntu. We'd love to know what the appeal of a VPM is for you. Is privacy of ultimate interest? Or are you hoping to gain access to services that aren't available in your area? Or maybe a little of both? Comment below and let us know. Mozilla VPM users uh, uses WireGuard to encrypt your network activity and hide your IP address with no bandwidth restrictions. They also boast that unlike some VPM services, they do not log your internet usage. Mozilla VPM costs just $5 per month and allows you to use it across up to five devices. The service is available in the US, the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, and Malaysia, with more regions coming soon. It's amazing what you can get for a fiver these days. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, that wasn't quite a plug, but yeah, it kind of is. Um, yeah, five bucks, that's pretty competitive. So, And Mozilla is obviously an, a household name that, yes. uh, that we can all know and trust. So uh, it's yeah. pretty great. But I think the key thing here, Jeff, and Becca touched on it, but the real sense that I get from Mozilla VPN is that they are aiming to be tr truly private. Yes. If you will, in that they are not collecting the data of what you're using the VPN for. Correct. And so, you know, that th that has all kinds of, you know, that can be good and that can be bad. However, from a privacy perspective, because VPNs are meant to be private, it's important to realize that a lot of the affordable or free, mm -hmm. that's even better air quotes, free uh, VPN services that are out there, a lot of them track you and yes. monitor what you're doing and log it and sell the data. And, and so when you're using a service that's meant to give you anonymity and they're logging it, that kind of defeats the purpose if you Absolutely. ask me. Yeah. So, and that's something that Mozilla has really uh, stepped up to, to say, hey, for five bucks a month, we're going to give this to you and, and we're not going to monitor you. We're not going to log right. what, what it is that you're doing. Um, VPNs can be very, very helpful. Um, we talked about proxies on the show before, yes. um, and, and it's sort of a similar idea, but a VPN allows you to basically place your IP elsewhere in the world. So that means even though I'm here in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, I can go on the internet and any website or service that I use will think that I'm in sunny California. Yes. Exactly. And so that can be good from an, an like a privacy perspective because they can't tell that I'm from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, but also it can allow me to access services that I can't normally access. Yeah. Up here in Canada, for example, um, we have different services than in America. Yes. So, and, and sometimes it is crippled services. Yeah. And so that, that can kind of stink. And, and, you know, maybe there's a gray area there and I don't want to get too far into that because it is a little bit of a legal gray area, but we understand what it means. And, um, but where it can be helpful as well is if by um, an incident that is not malicious, you get blocked on a service. Yes. Then you can change your location to that service using a VPN or a proxy, but uh, using a VPN in order to be able to continue using that service. And a good example of that would be um, even so much as where I myself from home have been working on Category 5 TV and accidentally put in the wrong password. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My firewall says, oh, somebody's trying to hack in, block that IP yes. address. So then I'll use the VPN service in order to, to actually do my work. So that's a good example of where I don't want them to be tracking how I'm accessing my backend. Yeah. 
I want to be able to log in even though I'm locked out because I'm going to have to go into the studio and unlock my, my IP from the firewall because I just lost access. Yes. Or I can use the VPN to get in, unlock my access. See, and that's right? there's, that's a, there's great. a lot of good use cases. I, I've, I mean, with my work, I, I view a lot of training videos and whatnot, mm -hmm. and and there's a couple times I've tried to view different training videos on different right. services. Yeah, and sometimes it goes, sorry, this is blocked. You can't view it in your country. Sure. And I'm like, why? It's a training video. It's not like yeah. it's a. So I've had to use VPN for that. Um, but as well, interestingly enough, at our church, uh, we bought uh, our internet services in LTE, mm -hmm. um, but the modem that we got is uh or sorry not the modem the um router uh Firewall. no the, the sim card that's sim in our card. modem uh, because we can take the modem wherever <clears throat> we want is a u.s based sim card oh so even though it's it's operating in canada it registers as an american device oh wow and so we need to use a vpn to access some of our services in canada, in canada. wow even oh, though man. like that makes it even here. slower jeff it really does that's another like, thing about mozilla's vpn is they do boast that they, it's fast yes really and, fast. i mean i have uh, there was a vpn service you know you're talking about free services i purchased one uh, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. that it was a i you know paid some money for it but it was, mm -hmm. it was a multi-device vpn mm -hmm. so i could use it on my phone i could use it on sure. my uh, yeah. android box all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. And uh, great Why service. would you want, don't answer this, why would you want to put it on your Android box? Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Um, yeah, not for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, We're strictly above board. It, well, <laughs> for me, it's about, I just don't like to be followed. You I, raised a really interesting comment about business, and I'm thinking immediately international business. Yeah. And how some services that may be in use by a, a UK partner... I can't access from here in Canada. Correct. Yeah. So there's another legitimate... I'm not being blocked from it because I'm a bad person or a bad guy. No, I'm being blocked from it because it's it's like region-specific. That's right. And yeah. so with an international business, that can cause problems. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's, check it, it out. It's really interesting to see. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of Mozilla for this kind of thing, though. Yeah, well, they're kind of expanding the line, you know? Got to stay them. competitive. Stay competitive. That's right. Uh, check out the link below if you want to check it out. Here's Becca. Intel's newly announced 12th gen chip hybrid is set to compete with both ARM and Apple Silicon. Intel announced at CES just this week that its 12th generation chipset hybrid, Alder Lake, will integrate big little technology, placing it in its closest yet competition with ARM and Apple's M1. With big little technology, processors are multi-core, with some cores being high performance while others are high efficiency. This enables the device or desktop to efficiently utilize performance cores versus power saving cores, depending on each specific function. While Intel's four running Lakefield chips also use technology similar to Big Little, they were only for mobile devices. What's so significant here is that the Alder Lake chipset will take the next major leap by becoming the foundation for Intel powered desktops and laptops as well. This is definitely an exciting step for Intel but it has a bit of a feeling of being a follower rather than an innovator. How is your faith in Intel these days? Are you considering AMD or ARM, or will you hang tight for the coming Alder Lake performance numbers? Post your thoughts in the comments below. Just like Intel's 11th Gen Tiger Lake chips, the 12th Gen Alder Lake chips will feature an enhanced version of the 10 nanometer Superfin designs, which will include new high power cores called Golden Lake and Gracemont. While some, of the, some people see this move strictly as a competitive one by Intel, others speculate that the move is to appease stockholders who might be losing faith in a company that seems to lag more and more behind with each passing year. Though delays and long waits are anticipated, Alder Lake chipsets may possibly be available as soon as the second half of this year. Now before we comment on this story, I have to give kudos to Becca for making it through because our cottage is on Eagle Lake. Okay. And Eagle in German is Adler. Oh, okay. Now, so with a little bit of dys dyslexia, you're going to take that L and move it before the D, and now it's Alder. Right. Alder Lake. Oh my goodness. She hit it every time, didn't once say Adler Lake. Good on her. <laughs> <laughs> so well done. <laughs> Big dot little in an Intel processor. I mean, that means, so we're talking multi-core processors. Becca really broke it down. And, you know, I'm, I'm impressed mm -hmm. that 
um, Big Dot Little is is really revolutionary in that when I'm doing really intensive tasks, I want my system to be performing at its best. I don't care in that moment about energy con uh, consumption or, or right. you, um, uh, reduction in, in energy. Uh, however, when my computer's idle or I'm just surfing the web or whatever, I don't need all that power. I don't yeah. need the heat that it generates. I don't. So big dot little means rather than throttling your processor, which is the old traditional Intel way, which is you know take a three gigahertz processor and when you're using it at its max, it's going to be 3.2 gigahertz, but then when you idle, it's going to go down to one gigahertz. Mm -hmm. and, and and so you know that's the old way throttling. This is multiple cores and some of the cores the little ones are simply more energy efficient so yep. it will choose based on the task which cores are being utilized for that task it's quite interesting and that's something that uh, that you know arm has been doing for a long time we see yep. it on single board computers we we're talking about the rock pro 64 the rock pro 64 has six cores mm -hmm. it's a single board computer with two big cores and four little cores yeah and so it's able to really perform well when it needs to, but then when it needs to be energy efficient or just being used as a you know an idle server, it's going to utilize it's going to use a, a very small little trickle of power. Right, but that uh, you know that alludes to what Beck asked uh, you know it, it, in the news there about are they just kind of following suit, or they're being innovative? Yeah. And, I have felt it, that way for a while with Intel, mm -hmm. like for, for but the, Mac as well. Well, yeah, exactly. But for the longest time, Intel was like the one to watch. Mm -hmm. It was like if something new was coming out, it was Intel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's shifted lately, and they are oh, yeah. playing catch up. But isn't it interesting who it's shifted to? Right. Do you know? ARM. Yeah. So the new M1 chips from Apple? ARM based. ARM based. Yeah. Intel's new chips? are utilizing a similar technology to what ARM is already doing. And we covered this like a month or so ago. Like is ARM We've had this talk be, yeah. because we see this coming. ARM is already huge, but they are taking over. They are. And I can't wait to have ARM servers. And this really, we had the discussion about ARM servers in the server room. Yeah. I, it never even crossed my mind about Big Dot Little. No. And so now I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Yeah. For my Debian web server running on these extremely efficient cores and then suddenly there's a burst of traffic and MySQL goes crazy and so it needs to use the big cores, mm -hmm. that's a fantastic scenario. Absolutely. So I'm loving where that's going. But yeah. is, you know, where, where is Intel going to fall into all this? It's an interesting thing. And then AMD yeah. is doing their own thing and they're doing really, really well at it. Yes. So it's a very competitive market. We're going to see a lot of change in the coming years. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Hey, Becca mentioned it, but do comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't miss the other stories we are following this week. First, the first ever Super Nintendo World theme park is set to open in February. Plus, Microsoft has fixed a bizarre Windows 10 error. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you catch the full stories. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching. <laughs>